in. Welcome back to your house. What's up Yara fam, welcome back to another exciting episode of Yara TV. I'm Miss Tina and you're joining me for What's That Sound? So, can anyone remember the two definitions from the previous episode? The first one is arrange or happen to come into the presence or company of, can be someone. And the second one is the flesh of an animal, typically a mammal or bird, as food. So, the words are, drum roll please. Meat. Meat and meat. You can see the meat is spelled differently. M-E-A-T, which is the flesh of an animal, typically a mammal or bird, as food, and meat. M double -E, e T. So, so arrange or happen to come into the presence of or company of so on. So two different words, two definitions, but the same sound. Meat. I'll give you the two definitions for the next episode. The first one is to mark a surface, typically paper with pen or a pencil or a similar implement. And the second one is morally good, justified, or acceptable. So be kind, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye now. Aha! It's time for another session of STEM. Science, technology, engineering and maths. Hope you enjoy it.
So today we're going to do a nines puzzle where we're going to put the numbers one to nine into this grid only once. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Each one time only so that each column totals to nine at the bottom. So first of all, I'll just try a seven, a nine, and a three. So if I look at that, I can think automatically, seven plus three is 10, plus nine more is 19. So I'll put my one in the tens column and my nine's already there. So now I've got to look at my second column. So we'll get rid of nine, three, and seven. And I've got these numbers left to fit in the remaining six boxes. Um, I'll try eight, and four, and two. So I've got eight plus two is 10, plus five is not 19. So I'm gonna have to change a number. Um, I'll try six. So I've got six plus four is 10, plus eight is 18, and one more is 19, that one works. So I'll put my one up there and my nine's already there and I'll get rid of six, four. So I've now got one, two, and five to place. So if I put um, a one, two, and five there, um, I've got five, six, seven, eight, nine. All done. Each column totals to nine and my puzzle's complete. Remember we asked you to collect some bottle tops? This is what the bottle tops are for. So you can do some of your pu the puzzles we show you at home. So you'll need 12 lids all together, three with a nine written on each, and the other ones with one through to nine. And one. And now what I'm gonna do is mark up my grid. So I've got three columns and three rows. And I'll start by putting the answers in first. So there's my nine, nine, and nine. And to start with, I'm gonna choose uh, six and eight and maybe four. Let's check that one. So six plus four is 10, plus eight is only 18. So I'm one number short, so I'll need a nine. And there's my nine. So six plus four is 10, plus nine is 19. So I've got my nine there, and I need to remember my one for my second column. Then I'm gonna put a three and maybe a five. What else can we choose? A seven. Let's check this one. Seven plus three is 10, plus five is 15, and the one I carried over, still not enough. So I'm actually gonna to need to put the eight in there. Let's add that up when you check. Seven plus three is 10, plus eight is 18. One more left over is 19. So there's my nine and I've gotta remember the one for the last column. And if I just put the three remaining ones in, we'll just do our one, the two, and the five. Five plus two is seven, plus one more is eight, and the one we carried over makes it nine. So they all total to nine in each column. This is only one solution. See what ones you can come up with. Right up. Two, one, three, four, five. Leanne? Yeah. I've got to answer different to you. Does that mean I'm wrong or am I right? Perfect. There are hundreds of different solutions to this puzzle. So that's why we'd love you to try it at home and please share the answers that you get with us. We'd love to hear from you. Jesus looks up there and he's like, go show yourself to the priest. Well, I don't know if he sounds like that, but 
Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. So he did not like it. He walked out and go show himself to the priest. One of them, which was the Samaritan, which was a foreigner, the nobody, he was the only one who came back and said thanks to Jesus. And it says that he threw him at his feet. So imagine Jesus, he's like, oh, go show yourself to the priest. One of them, the foreigner, comes back. No, he literally throws himself at Jesus' feet. But yeah, he threw himself at Jesus' feet, and Jesus was like, I said, send me a drink. You can that, or have it on my dog. So that's not the real version, that's just like my, my little version. But I'm going to read you the actual version, which is in Luke 17, verse 11. Follow me. Okay. As Jesus made his way to Jerusalem, he went along the border between Samaria and Galilee. He was going into a village when he was met by ten men suffering from a dreaded skin disease. They stood at a distance and shouted, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Jesus saw them and said to them, Go and let the priest examine you. On the way, they were made clean. When one of them saw that he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked him. The man was a Samaritan. Jesus said, There were ten who were healed. Where are the other nine? Why is this foreigner the only one who came back to give thanks to God? And Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has made you well. So I was sort of thinking about this story. And what are you thankful for? What are the things in your life that you prayed about that you asked Jesus to do? And he's come through, and how many times have you gone back to thank him? Sometimes that's with me. I'm like, I pray God, I'm like, God, can you please do this for me? Like, I really need your help. And if God pulls through, sometimes I don't even go back to thank him. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, it's sweet. Like, this is my life. I don't want to live it without even thanking God. And I think about God in this way, and I'm like, how many times is he like, I've answered her prayers, and she has come back to me. Out of those ten times, I probably come back once. Just like this foreigner, when no one else was there to me, and Jesus was. I could just think how heartbreaking Jesus would be, that he's answered my prayers, and that I have not came back to thank him. I just wanted to leave you with the thought that... Whenever you're praying or whenever you're out and about, remember to be thankful and grateful that God has pulled through and that He's all you by your side because I don't know the ten times.
Steve Silva and I'm proud to be sharing with you this exclusive NIROC special this week. Our language matters is the theme for NIROC this year. You are celebrated our indigenous languages by inviting special guests and other schools for an afternoon of festivities. Senior student Christella Campbell opened the ceremony wonderfully and thanked our special guests. I am from Robinson River community and my people's language is Garwa. I'd like to thank you all for coming and helping us celebrate our languages matter week. The ceremony was then handed over to Aranda traditional owner, Mr. Peter Wallace, for a welcome to country. That's what I wonder. I talked in English before. Thank you very much, Yvonne. Thank you. A special smoking ceremony was then held by an Aranda woman, Amelia Turner. We're going to do a little bit of smoking to whoever wants to come up to get smoked, especially the students in at Urara. And I'm, and I'm really glad that smoking is done today to keep the students calm and also the teachers who work within the students and as a part of the, the education. It was great to see our teachers, students, guests and visiting school students take part in the ceremony. The smoking ceremony is a cultural welcome to this country. It was a real surprise to see the your staff and student band rock it on stage. Miss Elise and team really got the party started. It was also great to see Mr. Craig, Mr. Tom, Mr. Sai, and Elijah in their element. Another great performance by Centralian Senior School Band, Juice, the hip hop group performed for originals. He's young and ambitious, had his eyes on his visions like a hawk on ballistic. To him, a natural mystic, refused to have his visions imprisoned. Rain on blue skies, he didn't give us stuff about the conditions. Life a window, and he would fly away with the pigeons. Nothing was impossible, yeah, it was gonna be a mission. It wasn't like Juice will head up no to perform at the Darwin Beat Festival next week, and we wish them luck. It was great to see our staff and students feed the hungry crowd. After lunch, our reporters asked our guests why language is important. What's language mean to you? Our language is very strong and, you know, we like to teach our children. I've, um, I've got, I speak seven languages and I like to see other kids learn other languages. And it's very important to learn languages and to keep their culture strong and share the languages. Your language means where you come from and where, what, what um, sort of culture you grew up in. Language means to me identity, um, my culture and family. Plenty of activities kept the students entertained. There was a photo booth and face painting.
Miss Sandra ran a ceramics class. Mr. Carl and Miss Roxanne kept the students heart rate up with volleyball and Aboriginal target game Kabuchi. Our reporters received great feedback from many of our um, guests. What's, what's been the highlight for today? Oh, it's um, good, enjoyable to come to college and look what's going on for the college night up day. What have you learned today? Um, we learned about the smoking ceremony and drumming. We did drumming and it was really fun to interact with the other Aboriginal kids. And the kids doing that different activities. I've really enjoyed listening to the music. That's been pretty awesome. But yeah, it's been fun hanging out here with Katie and making popcorn and watching the film loop. So yeah, it's been great. And what's the highlight for today? For me, the highlight today um, would be seeing all the smiles on everybody's faces and also the cupcakes are really yummy too. Thank you for your time. Thanks, Dania. The afternoon was a real success and we thank all of those involved in the preparation and cleanup and we look forward to next year's celebrations. As part of our seniors' language assessment task, we created this video with the help of students and staff. It shares the variety of Aboriginal languages spoken at this school. Let's have a look. Hello, my name is Kerry. I come from Elikran community. I speak Walpuri and Western Naranda. I want to share a word in Western Naranda. Wada means hello. Hello, my name is Silvani. I come from Elikran community. I speak Walpuri and I want to share a word in my language. Ngochu means good. Hello, my name is Penny. I come from Fink community. I speak Yankunjara language. I want to share in my language. Palya means good. Hello, my name is Shawa. I come from Hemisphere community. I speak Western Aranda language. I want to share a word in my language. Mara means good. Hello, my name is Lazarus Hall. I come from Minyeri community. I speak Creole. I want to share a word in my language. Guroi means good. Hello, my name is Kieran James. I come from Basswick community. I want to share a word in my language. Good follow-a is mean good way. Hello, my name is Derek. I'm from Minjeri community. I speak Creole. I want to share a word in my language. Good windy, it's me now. Good feeling and happy New York Day. <coughs> we want to share a word with you from the top end. Yo, mind map means everything is good. Hello, my name is Lucasta. My name is Costella. We are from Robinson River community. We speak our language. We want to share a word in my language. Badiwa means goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, my name is Ernest. I come from Pupuana community. I speak Lucha. You mean yes. Hello, my name is Courtney. I come from Pine Creek. I speak Kunwingu. I want to share a word in my language. Bobo means goodbye. Hello, my name is Joella. And I'm Tamika. We, we come, come from Tara community. We, we speak Ayala. We want to share our word in our language. Mora means good. Hello, my name is Kiana. And I'm Shawan. 
We come from Emmons Berlinaria community. We speak Western Islander language. We want to share a word in our language. Mara means country. I'm Steve Silva. In my language, we say, Yo, mind mark. Goodbye. Welcome back. It has been another busy start to the term with so many new things going on. This year we introduced a new electives program and this week we visit our students at St Philip's College learning how to climb all safely. Let's have a look. My name is James Tudor, I'm the Head of Students at uh, St Philip's College and Teacher of Outdoor Education. Uh, we are here today uh, with Urara College to uh, do some rock climbing on this uh, magnificent rock wall that uh, St Philip's has. Uh, we open the rock wall up to the uh, community on occasions for people to come in and learn about uh, working together uh, and also to learn a bit about uh, the skills associated with rock climbing. Um, today we're going to work in groups of three. Uh, we're going to learn a little bit about the safety systems associated with rock climbing uh, and how we can uh, work together to um, be safe uh, but also um, have some fun and achieve uh, some pretty fantastic goals. Yes. Climbing. It was fantastic having uh, Urara students out here this afternoon. Uh, it was great to see that everyone had a go in some regard, uh, whether it was climbing on the wall or bouldering across or working in the uh, bouldering cave, it was great to see everyone have a go. Uh, I work closely with uh, Jarrell, uh, with Travis and Michael, uh, and both of those, uh, all three of those guys picked everything up uh, very quickly and left here with a very good understanding of how to work safely on the rock wall. Earlier this week, the Girls' Academy held an AFL match against Olch here on campus. Connie Kurtman has this report. Here yeah, I had their first game of the school girls' AFL competition in against Olch. On Wednesday, our girls won eight goals, three behinds, 50 on, to four goals, plus three behinds, 27. It was a great game of skill by our girls, and goals were scored by me, April, and Danielle. Western ground goes to April Spencer for her dual combo of amazing attack and defense. It was a great start to the season, and we hope to get, rid, get into another grand final at the end of term. From time to time, we interview Urara staff to learn where they come from. Let's have a look. Hi, Maren Palmer, and I'm interviewing Miss Elizabeth, who has joined the Urara family this year. So, Miss Elizabeth, can you tell us about yourself and where do you come from? Thank you, Aaron. I come from Queenstown, which is in the South Island of New Zealand, and it's surrounded by two famous ski fields and a very large lake called Wakatipu that we water ski on during the summer. I have two children. Um, my son, he lives in Dunedin, and my daughter lives in Wellington. So can you tell us your role here at your art college? I am the senior teacher for the Essentials and Consolidated students, and I work with them to uh, help them with their literacy and also with their other subjects. What are some of the things you're looking forward to here at Urara? Um, coming to Urara has been a really interesting journey for me and I'm looking forward to meeting new people and making new friends and more importantly going out and seeing more of the beautiful country, the family of Urara. That's all for this week's Urara TV Bulletin. Looking forward to seeing you all next week. Have a good term! Bye! Bye. <laughs>